from the heavens we are all tiny creatures of the same God surviving in the maze of our own habitat the hood when we grow up many of us don't make it out we perish before our talents reach our goals and leave debt for those who bury us who will carry us but us who will do for you but you as you struggle to carve your way through these streets without failure nothing beats a failure but a try as nothing remains but a memory when we die there are so many obstacles for a hoodster as we think of a better way many of us become comfortable and complacent with being basic and sidetracked by the material things that we chase in our land we fall short in the eyes of those who judge us but shine bright in the hearts of those who love us neighborhood so strong this bond that the future will no longer repeat the past year after year new faces become attached to the fabric of our reality there is always pain but we learn to deceive ourselves and keep it dormant as the days of our lives become burdened with the injustices of our struggles can't stop won't stop if there was a geographical cure I think we all choose a different destination yet we find that all hoods are the same, enriched with the hope that our children and their children will become much more than we are, and so much more than a name on the wall. If you fall, get back up with the speed of lightning. Let's not be frightened over that which can only make us stronger. I see the future and refuse to be held back by the past any longer. This is our opportunity. Now, Nipsey, one more time. <clears throat> this is our opportunity. This is our opportunity. This is our opportunity. Ready? Yeah. Ready? Come on. Right at that glass, you got this. Come on. Ready? And action. This is our opportunity. You made me laugh. Hold on, let me have you smile. <laughs> good job, good job. Do it again, do it again. Come on, come on, you got it. That was great, that was great. Let me keep my face straight. And action. This is our opportunity. Ready? And action. This is our opportunity. This is our opportunity. I'm a proud dad, Monty Ma. Good job, Monty Ma. Good job. <laughs> And he was nervous. He I thought you was, was gonna best. do. I yeah, you for sure like... served me. <laughs> that was better than mine. I was at a Laker game. I just was sitting next to Dave. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I never met him. And, you know, by the second half, we had took shots. Everybody was a little friendly, started right. talking and shit, you know what I'm saying? Right. And he like, yeah, Nip, you know, I got a, I got a project I think you're perfect for. Could you pull up to the office in Calabasas tomorrow? I said, all right, well, I'll come through. Cool. I pull up. He and Will Smith's team had an office together. And, you know, he just showed me the blueprint and was like, this is what I'm doing. And so I just automatically knew he was somebody that think like I think. And then he told me a story from L.A. Me and dude connected on the personal level. Like, I, I respect dude and I f*** with him. The blueprint just made perfect sense. So I'm like, what should I do? He like, bro, just ride with me. And, um, when it's time to put the play together, you know, we come to the table and lock in. Lock in. and another man from the Crenshaw District have teamed up to give back to their community. CBS 2's Joe Kwan says the space offers something for the next generation of business leaders. 
This is Vector 90, a space for local entrepreneurs like Deshay Green. I grew up around here, and there is absolutely no space like this. And if it's a little loud out here on the main workspace, inside these rooms right behind me is a little more privacy, a little more soundproofing where you can have a private phone call or meetings. And it's two blocks from Green's home. Literally in my backyard. Real estate investor David Gross is the founder of Vector 90. He says he's been given many opportunities, and this is his way to pay it forward in the neighborhood where he was born. I always think that there are a lot of people who would be in my shoes, you know, had they had those moves. Gross also partnered with rap star Nipsey Hussle, who also grew up here. This is one of his life mottos. It's also the name of the nonprofit downstairs that will offer STEM classes to kids. Tons of genius in, in all of our inner cities, especially over here in the Crenshaw District. We recently opened up um, an inner city co-work space in the, in the vein of... Um, we work, like we work. For, for local entrepreneurs, you know what I mean? And we got, uh, I think, eight entrepreneurs that all have products in the tech space that are in the building with us. And we, we also have a, a science, technology, engineering, and math center on the second level for young kids to be able to get trained in, um, in the skill set that it, it takes to get into Silicon Valley. How, I just want to ask everybody here in the audience, how many of y'all are familiar? First of all, anyone have kids in the audience? Okay, one, two, three, all right. Are you familiar with the STEM program? Now, the fact that this man right here has invested his time in, in space for that, I think that's worth a, you know, yeah, a yeah. round of applause. Absolutely amazing. Thank y'all. Because that's the next level. That's how right. we're going to bridge the You've gap to a lot of these things. Yeah. Such, a, such a forward thinker. What, you know, what was it about what you do and who you are that made you want to get involved with that you know, STEM program specifically and, and just understanding how important it is for the next generation? Well, you know, truthfully, I was at the Laker game, and I was sitting next to a person, and we ain't really speak during the first couple quarters. I ain't know him. I didn't think he knew me. I was, you know, with my people. He was with his people. And um, about second quarter, we had took some shots, and, you know, that shit make you a little more friendly. Loosen, <laughs> loosen up. <laughs> he like, yeah, you nip, right? Yeah, what's up, man? Cool. We started talking. He like, yeah, you know, I'm a, I'm a real estate developer and investor. Um, I got a concept, and I want you to take a look at it. What you doing tomorrow? Can you come out of the office? So me and my homeboy pulled up to his office, and he had the blueprint for what became Vector 90 and Too Big to Fail, which is what I just described to y'all. His name Dave Gross. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, dude come from the inner city of L.A. You know, his brother was, you know, murdered recently. You know what I mean? On gang shit. His other brother doing time. And uh, he was just the, the one out of the three brothers that, you know, went to New York and went to an Ivy League school, pursued finance, ended up on Wall Street. And then when he became... Um, you know, accumulated some resources. He wanted to come back to LA and build. So that was the vision he had. And, you know, I, I, I partnered up with him. And um, it's a documentary we're getting to put out about it and everything. Some very powerful people involved. A dude by the name of um, Don Peebles. He one of the most successful black real estate developers in the world. I'm especially empathetic to that feeling, being a young person in that situation where you got talent and you just have no way to articulate your voice or connect with platforms or, you know, just shine what you what you what your gifts are for the world. You go to any inner city around this country, they felt that sense of hopelessness, helplessness, essentially feeling like they've played with an unfair hand their entire lives. Um, my concern is that as this becomes an increasing problem in this country, there won't be the political will or the resources to address it in these communities that were left behind from jump. Um, so Vector 90 is an, a solution to kind of address some of these gaps in opportunity and exposure and access. I would rather shoot before I run. Pressure on my shoulder when it's done. You should try and do what we done. Make a million dollars while you young. I would rather shoot before I run. Pressure on my shoulder when it's done. You should try and do what we done. Make a million dollars while you young. So if you could tell us how exactly and what deal you did to make your first million dollars. Self-made, self-made, the really self-made. I'll never understand the type of games you play. West side to the west side, Atlanta until I die. All right, so first of all, everybody did a great job. All the presentations were fun. Awesome job. Let's give, let's give them a
Jay-Z has been named Puma's president of basketball operations. The hip-hop icon first collaborated with Puma last year when the label provided merchandise for the rapper's 444 tour. Jay will be assisting with the brand's creative direction and product, as well as recruiting NBA players and fellow artists. This isn't the first time the star has branched out into business, having founded streaming service Tidal and entertainment company Rock Nation. Jay-Z has also been busy with the joint album Everything Is Love with wife Beyonce, which was released on Saturday evening following their concert at London's Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park. Congratulations to Jay-Z. He becomes Puma's president of basketball operations. What's that mean? Top NBA draft prospects to sign on. I guess he's uh, in charge of signing players to, I guess, endorsement deals and shoe deals and sneaker deals and things like that. Is that not a conflict of interest with Rock Nation Sports? Hmm. Hmm. I'm just asking. I mean, I don't know. I didn't think about that. I don't know. I mean, I guess, you know, well... Get Peckers on the phone. Yeah, yeah, Peckers. I mean, maybe Peckers can explain. Get I mean, Peckers on the phone. I mean, think about it. That's perfect. Hey, you sign with Rock Nation, and I can almost guarantee you a sneaker deal. No. Uh, I'm dropping the clues bombs for uh, Jay-Z. Uh, Sean, Jay-Z and Sean Peckers. Sean, maybe you can explain to us later on how this is not a conflict of interest <laughs> with Rock Nation Sports. But that's... A lot of people don't understand, given where you've come from, which mm. is from the hardest of the heart, hard scrabble existence, tough childhood, out here with these gang bangers and so on, yeah. but you've recreated yourself lyrically. Yes, you've sir. allowed the integrity of your art to stand for you. Tell us about how you took literacy so seriously that it could literally save your life. Um, words is powerful, you know? And I think that um, the ability to articulate you know, you can, you, can, you can really impact people. Yeah, I have a right. question. You really are, were about that life. A lot of people pretend to be, and you got out of that, and you are a huge success. What would you say to people that are out there with similar backgrounds that want to make their dreams come true and stay in the course? Um, I think as human beings, everybody has a natural gift and a natural passion but then you go outside and you get influenced and you, and you feel pressure from, from what's going on outside. And so, you know, I read one time, like, would you rather be at war with yourself and at peace with the world or at peace with yourself and at war with the world? Mm -hmm. And that was powerful for me. You know what I'm saying? Dan Nipsey Hussle's fans, family, and closest friends all agree he's one of the realest MCs out there of his time. Now, this title d isn't just because of his rhymes, talking about the life in South LA, but because he's creating change in South LA. All my life, I've been all my life. Yeah. All my life, been all my life. Yeah. Sacrifice, hustle, pay the price. Seven mixtapes, a chart topping studio album and a lot of Nipsey Hussle's lifelong grind is paying off and now the 33 year old rapper is paying it forward in Crenshaw. My career started right here. This this community put me on. Yes, sir. Nipsey started in this parking lot on the corner of Slauson and Crenshaw. He used to sell his unsigned mixtapes out of the trunk of his car. Now you actually own half of this lot. Yeah, me and my, my family, um, Black Sam, Adam, uh, my pops, you know, the whole team. He also owns Marathon Clothing Store, which not only sells his label, but lets his visitors use an app to enhance their shopping experience. We're playing a long game. We don't want the money to stop when we go. When we can't work no more, we want it to outlive us. We want it to be generational. You know, and next basic door, needs. a basic needs yeah. shop. They sell everything from prepaid cell phones to fragrances. 
And at T-R-E-J. both stores, Everything. Nipsey hired local right. artists. It's Tanny. Hi, one Tanny. Of our, I'm Leah. Uh, partners and up and coming artists. Okay. By the end of this year, Nipsey will also open a barber yeah. shop. And so we're going we gonna to call this um, Steve's. And it's named after my homeboy, Fats. You know what I mean? Uh, this is a tattoo of him right here. He, yeah, he was murdered last year. And a Creole seafood restaurant. And everything. All of the um, equipment was brand new. All of these businesses are family owned and operated. Nipsey says businesses are only part of the change. For true change, he's starting with kids at 54th Street Elementary, an area plagued by violence. Yeah, I think it's just about offering a new identity, you know? Like it is, it is, um, it's not weak to be strong. It ain't weak to be, to make smart moves. He hired a local artist to help spruce up this basketball court. And I see in the inside, it's got safety, respect, yeah. friendship, yeah. kindness, yeah. Principles. community, you principles. Know, principles, yeah, to live by. And in attempt to attract entrepreneurs to the community, his latest business venture is Vector 90, a co-working space in the Crenshaw district. It's very important that um, co-working spaces or spaces like this exist in communities like this for people of color, where we can have resources and spaces to work and to network and to meet with people and collaborate with people. So, for a young boy from Crenshaw who started with nothing. I got you, big dog. Let me sign that part of the yes, front. Nipsey Hustle has given everything, hope, opportunity, and resources for his community to grind and succeed. Meditate and get into yourself and find out what's really motivating. Yeah, man, just, I think it's, it's vital to pattern yourself after success. Don't copy, but, you know, identify the moves that really impact these people's trajectory. And, you know, you can import some of those things. And then a lot of people, man, just, you know, people that I, I consider to be intelligent, I listened to, or somebody that was, you know what I mean? You know, it, it was like a reward for being ignorant growing up like the dumbest one that didn't care about life the most got the got the credit and i ain't never really like understand that so it was always people that was in the environment but yeah you know didn't feel ashamed to be intelligent or like speak with some type of sense yeah, not always man. gravitate toward that individual you know what i'm saying yeah we ain't got to go too deep into it but i i, I always appreciated the, the ones I was secure enough to speak the real, mm -hmm. even though I wasn't popular, you know, message. Right. They was like, whoever don't like it, whatever, so what? We going, we could deal with that how we deal with it. But this is what I got to say. This is where I stand. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Now, uh, uh, Stolen Greatness on the Loaded Basis record with uh, you and CeeLo. Yeah. Explain how powerful that term is. I said, um, it's a couple people every generation that wasn't supposed to make it out, but decode the matrix. Mm -hmm. And when they get to speak, it's like a coded language. Ooh. Reminds, because of their strength and all the stolen greatness. Yes, sir. Just what I was talking about, about coming from gang, gang culture. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody go to jail. Everybody get killed mm -hmm. in this, in, you know, in, in gang banging. For real. Yeah. That's, that's, that's like a catchphrase, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But in real life, you know what I mean? Everybody go get them football numbers, get washed up or, mm -hmm. or get you know, flipped. Mm -hmm. So to not do that, you successful. To be alive and not in jail, you successful, you survived. Absolutely. You know, but then to be somebody that achieves on another level and just by like regular world standards mm -hmm. are successful. Not in terms of just not being in jail, not dead, but like, you know, paying taxes and owning businesses and being somebody that, you know, uh, you know what I mean, got employees and, and, and pay salaries to be successful on that level mm -hmm. is really rare.
Mark, we are outside the Marathon clothing store. LAPD just left the scene. Now, this store owned by that rapper, Nipsey Hussle. No word on whether he was involved in this incident, but the LAPD tells me they are investigating a possible shooting and stabbing. Now, this Marathon clothing store is very popular among the rapper's fans from all over the country. LAPD tells me that they were flagged. Uh, LAPD officers who were in the area were flagged down by people who heard gunshots, but by the time they arrived, those involved had fled, including any victims. Police are investigating a possible shooting and possible stabbing. They found blood at the scene, and three employees at the store who were inside when police arrived have not been cooperating. Now, rapper Nipsey Hussle opened the clothing store back in June of last year at a star studded event which included NBA players Russell Westbrook, DeMarcus Cousins, and some notable rappers. The store is very popular and has gained notoriety across the country. I spoke with a couple who was visiting in from Detroit, and they said they came to the store to buy merchandise, but the LAPD turned them away. We were coming to pick up some souvenirs that our family and friends really wanted, but we're not going to be able to get them now. Yeah. I'm scared, wondering what went on. We could have been in there if we was here minutes earlier. And police were here for four hours. They gained access to that surveillance video, which they say will be a key part of this investigation. Uh, as I mentioned, by the time they arrived here, no suspects were at the scene or victims. There's no one answer to, to how you change the hood or change the, the, the reality of what goes on. But what you got to think about is when you don't have resources, you're in survival mode. You know, so being in survival mode automatically rules out a lot of things because you don't care about morality because you don't experience morality. You experience, you know, the need to survive. You don't experience, you know, fairness. You don't experience planning for the future. You just experience my ribs touching. You know what I mean? And it's better me than you. And you know, it's a survival instinct that kick in. So I think once you get out of the survival mode, your, your morals come back closer to, to your daily decision making. You start thinking about what's right and what do I believe in? But until you get out of survival mode, you ain't got time to be worrying about right and wrong. You worrying about bottom line, you know what I mean? By any means necessary. So I think that economics is the answer. Empowering people economically is how you really, really impact but i don't know if it's about dropping a bag of money in the hood i think it's about impacting culture in a way that you know the mentality changes and then also you know the the institutions that exist it's just a prison institution really it's like a pipeline of jail it, it ain't it ain't no 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 constructive institutions for real that meets you ground level it's just like if you fuck up, we gonna we got somewhere to put you. So it's like a fear-based preventative approach. Then like some love and like we know y'all going through a struggle, and we know y'all could use an art center or a, you know what I mean a studio compound or entrepreneurial space. It's like whatever going on. If you can't figure it out, we gonna lock you up, bro. So whatever it is, yeah, it's on y'all. I think like you get people out of survival mode, they start thinking different. I did, you know, when I when I figured out, you know, how to how to get myself out of the situation, my approach to life and people was different. I wasn't so angry, I didn't have my guard up, I wasn't so aggressive, I wasn't so, you know, expecting if you ain't helping me, fuck you. It wasn't that wasn't the mentality no more. And I can't blame nobody. You know what I mean? That's thinking about how they gonna pay their rent or like going through not having food at the house, being young and having to go outside to hustle for, for to feed themselves with school clothes, that's going to change people. That's going to make you feel a way. And you can't fault them. You just got to kind of empathize with the, with the scenario and understand you put a, a person in, in survival mode, they're going to survive by any means. Um, I, I couldn't make a blanket statement to just the young people doing dirt. I don't think that's honest. You know what I mean? It's context for everything. Nothing happens in a vacuum, you know? But I would say that, you know what I mean? You're gonna lay in the bed you make. You're not gonna get away with nothing in terms of the energy. You know what I mean? You might beat the, the camera or the police. They might not catch you for what you're doing, but the energy is always gonna return to you. So when you when you just living in this in this cycle of being negative all day and just putting out negativity and, and that's the only energy you're putting out, it's gonna return to you in a different form than you put it out in. 
So I would just say, you know, master your energy. Do your best to master your energy and your and what you put out. You know, and um, unless that's what you want, you know, because you you entitled to whatever you want to create, whatever experience you want to create for yourself. But if you're tired of that shit, adjust the energy. You know what I mean? As best you can, adjust adjust what you wake up thinking and what you say, and then lastly, what you do. And that's not an easy thing to do because it's it's such a pressure in the, in the, in these areas to just go by the, the way things are. But you know, it's a lot of examples that you could look up to as young kids in the streets. You could look up to a you know a Kendrick Lamar. Not the words. Forget what he's saying. Just where he came from. I seen him. You could you could YouTube him freestyling the Nickerson Garden projects. You could look up to a Nip Hustle. You know, you could look up to a YG, you know what I mean? To a, a top dog, you know what I mean? To, to a, any one of these guys that came from this, this, this hopelessness and, and, you know, wiggled their way through it. You know what I mean? And you could reverse engineer what they did. You know, look at the steps, what, what, what happened? You know, so I would say that. If I was to narrow down the three most important keys to my success, I would definitely say consistency. Because, you know, um, it don't happen overnight. And there's going to be moments when it's really, really frustrating. And there's going to be moments when it's really, really inspiring and empowering. And if you get too high off the highs and too low off the lows, you know, you're going you're gonna to take yourself on a ride that's very, very uncomfortable. I think it's just about being committed to the work and appreciating it, you know, when it's good and not stressing too bad when it's bad. Just appreciating the work and staying focused on showing up every day. The second key to my success, I would say, is, um, you know, striving to master your craft and just offer a, a next level product, whether it's clothing, music, um, concerts, performances, just just understanding how important it is to really have a, a high quality product and consistently get better. And the third key to my success, I would be is um, loyalty to the team. You know what I mean? Sometimes the game tests you, tests your loyalty by presenting an opportunity that looks like it's more beneficial to just, you know, go against the team or, or go left onto some rogue shit. But when you stay loyal to the team, you know, you're not, you're not tempted when you've already committed to being loyal to the team. Those things don't tempt you. And, you know, I think that it reveals character over a while. People see that, like, this would have been a good opportunity, but it's loyalty that prevented him from taking this. And that ended up working for you in the long run. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. man. Now you know, man. It's so much to talk about, but this, but Doctor CB. Yeah, you know Sebi. what I'm saying. Sebi, Sebi corrected me on the air. It was dead wrong, man. Yeah, his name so, Doctor Sebi. Sebi, okay, yeah. Doctor Sebi. I, I, I uh, researched him myself. You know, mm -hmm. the person who, um, who actually cured AIDS. Hundred percent. Now, see, we going we going in murky waters now. Be be ready for what come with this. Oh, you know, come on, but, I'm ready. I'm, Just I'm, be but ready. I'm here. You, you know what? That's the reason why I say I, I'm super excited to speak to you about this kind of stuff because yeah. this is the stuff that I don't really. I'm not public about stuff that I read. Yeah. Doctor Sebi. Yeah. That stuff is kind of weird to this generation. Like, what, yeah. what are you talking about? They can't no. call me weird. You know what I'm saying? So I'm <laughs> so, gonna say it. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, so you you want to do a documentary about him? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He and cured. If they AIDS. down me, y'all better ride for me, man. <laughs> y'all better burn something down, man. Come I come on. up falling off the building or something, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? For real, man. Well, well, give some people some information about Dr. Sebi that that they might not know. You know what I'm saying? That's the biggest one. But he beat, else, he he went to trial. A lot of things he did, right? But mm -hmm. in 1985, he got arrested because he was printing in magazines that he cures AIDS and mm -hmm. sickle cell and cancer. Yeah. And they like that's false advertisement. That's malpractice of medicine. All type of thing. He wasn't no doctor. He mm -hmm. just used herbs and his understanding of herbs. Right. And he went to trial in New York. And he proved in the state of New York on record mm -hmm. that he said, bring me 70, bring me y'all AIDS patients from y'all doctors. He treated them while he was on trial. He said, now have y'all doctors test them. The same ones diagnosing with AIDS, had them test them. 77 patients was cured of AIDS on record. See? In 1985 by his herbs. See Why that? we ain't never heard that? Why they ain't been on TV? They got a Tupac and Biggie, the 55th uh, documentary they done made about the Tupac and Biggie murder. 
They got billboards, you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And that's no disrespect to Pac and Biggie. No. Nope. We, we love them. And that's right. our, you know, they, 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 that's us. Yes. But why we ain't seen no doc on that? Exactly. Why we ain't, why that's not no headline news? You feel me? Yes. So I just felt like um, when I found that out, I started doing my research. I found out he, he's the one cured. Well, I'm not going to say, you know, that, that's, his, that's his business, yes, his sir. family to say mm-hmm. who, he, who he treated. I ain't going to take that info and put that out there. But a lot of people. He treated. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And um, what's to me is the story is that he went to trial against mm-hmm. the state of New York and won. Then the feds indicted him. And he went to trial against the feds and won. You know what I mean? And the judge even said, like, oh, yeah, you know, my whole life I wanted to change the world. But I just ended up being a judge. Mm. But today I'm going to find you not guilty and change the world. That was her statement at the end of the whole trial. Ooh. By finding him not guilty, she gets to impact the world. And yeah, we ain't never heard that story. You got to search for that. Yeah. So, you know, I'm in a position. I can produce content. You know, I got, that's a that's a, a real interesting story. If I didn't know nothing about nothing, if I ain't got to be a vegetarian to appreciate that mm-hmm. or a, a health nut, no disrespect to nobody, what right, I mean right, when right. I say that, to, to appreciate that, damn, that's that's interesting. You know, who is this dude? Let me research. And they had, after that, they'll go into everything he's done and, you know, figure out exactly how powerful dude was and why he ended up mysteriously dying in jail recently. With the whole Atlantic deal, like when we first got with you last year around this time, you had just got, got the deal. It was a big deal. Like, you know, what does it mean? Independent powerhouse, Nip Hustle, right. breaking bread with right. Julie Greenwald, Mike Kyle, right. all these people. Like, right. Now when you look at it now, like, do you feel like, is again, not to go back to words like validation or vindication, is like, it's part of all this the master plan that, that you have elevated that you necessarily didn't have to go like super commercial with it, right. but you're being recognized on that bigger scale. Right. Is that is that signs that Atlantic is the right partner for you? Um, I, it was signs before that, you know, just how the whole album rollout went, just from the process of us signing to getting the album on the shelf or on the platforms. Yeah. Um, just everything. The DSPs, been, the been damn right, DSPs. That, whatever it is now. <laughs> everything been solid across yeah, the board. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So... I had a convo with Julianne um, Kaiser just about that, like you know, shit been clean. Yeah. You know, I had a I had an experience at a at a label that left me a little bit, you know what I mean, yeah. S- skeptical yeah. about just the relationship. That you could do that, right? Mm-hmm. But just first and foremost was the terms we went back in on. They we, they <clears throat> met the terms, and then after that, just the experience with them. Everybody been men and women that they were. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It been. It been fl- smooth and fluid the whole way. Yeah. yeah. Even so, even after you drop the album, you get all the claim. You're like two months, three months in. How does the relationship still feel strong to you? That you feel like the the that this is where I need to be. I mean, it's just like I know I know what my job is, and I know what their job is. Mm. If everybody do their job, we good. Yeah. Everybody gonna be good. And yeah. so, I'm focused on my job, and to know that the people that's you know the partners, they wake up every day, they focus on their job. Yeah. So we good. I don't got no other expectations. Yeah. I'm gonna do my job. You do yours. We are gonna be solid. Mm. Clearly, they doing theirs. You feel yeah. me? So we good. Yeah. yeah. But even with the situation, like real life, still is part of what's going on. Cause I saw your brother Sam bailed himself out. Yeah. Recently. Yeah. Just honestly, bro. Like that situation was just a case of the police just being um, devilish. Mm. You know what I'm saying? For no, just clearly, just they see what we doing. They see what the 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 energy is. They mm-hmm. see what direction we going in, and just the history of where we come from. Yeah. They still hate that. Mm. Yeah. And so they they take time. They take opportunities. And you're still in that community, and too. we still there. So it's yeah. a, it's a texture of things that happen. That if it happened anywhere remotely close, they gonna try to put it on some. Involving us, mm. yeah. And so you know, he bailed out, went to court, and got. They the- said Nipsey bailed him out. Nipsey's like, put some respect on his name. And <laughs> yeah, don't do himself that. Out. Don't do that at all. <laughs> One million. Yeah, Sam. But you know, he went to court, and thank God, the case yeah. was uh, it didn't even get picked up by the DA. Oh, that's mm. great. You know what I'm saying? So his first court date, it got rejected. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Shout out to him. That's dope. I always thought about your brand, the marathon. You know, you talk about that all the time. You shout it out. And eventually, marathons, you know, do have a finishing line. Right. Like, but for you, like, when do you feel like you're going to come to your end of the race? Um, Is there an end? I mean, yeah, life. Mm. At the end of life, right. you know. But I feel like regard, it don't, it's, not, it's not limited to music, that point of view. Mm. It's not just about making music. It's just about, you know, mentality, in my opinion. Just, yeah. 
you know, how to how to take your lumps in life, you know what I mean? Because you're going you're gonna to take your L's, you're mm -hmm. going to have your ups and downs. So just a philosophy or a point of view on how to how to look at the journey, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? You got where you at, you got where you're trying to be. And then you got all this shit in between that's not going to matter when you get here. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I feel like, and it was a way of inspiring myself also, just like a pep talk I was telling myself while I was in a, a vulnerable moment, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That the marathon go, it goes on. It no don't stop. What. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I've been doing this. I, I, I it wasn't about <clears throat> um, this moment. I was doing this way back then. Mm -hmm. Doing this back then got me here. So yeah. reflect, bro. Just you know what I'm saying. Keep it going. Right. What do you mean yeah. when you said never let a hard time humble us? Never let a hard time <laughs> humble us because you know it's it's the game gonna test you. It's ups and downs. Mm -hmm. And so like you know you got to be who you are at all times. Right. You know what I mean? So you know just. Like a like a principle to live by, you know. Yeah. yeah. Even though we're still in the victory lap, are you working towards the next album already? Oh, you want that exclusive? Because he's gonna, gonna give it to LeBron first. So LeBron's gonna be on the victory lap up. <laughs> yeah. gonna, nah, gonna what's be crazy, on IG. man? What's crazy, bro, is that you know um, I made no pressure after victory lap. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So all them records came after Victory Lap. Mm -hmm. Every one of them. I like that that EP. Yeah, everything on there came just after. Just the show. We just just because I was working. I'm like, yeah. just what you said. How you, how you going to come with some records? I, yeah. Man, I got 50 songs in. <laughs> none that. of, none of this could have been on Victory Lap, though. That's like my none, favorite. None of, no, none of this? Yeah. Yeah, it could have. And uh, Stuck in the Grind could have been on mm, Victory Lap, too. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I just wanted to make music. We, we mixed the album. I got the album done, like mastered in my hand. All right, what are we going to do now? Mm. We got to shoot videos. We got to mix the music. We got to do the marketing. I mean, we got to work on some more music and then figure out the release and all that. But yeah. I don't want to, I want to stay in music mode. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. So to answer that, we been, we got a ton of music, you know? Mm. I got like two mm. other collab projects I did. Right. Bino, with, uh, with Bino, <clears throat> that we going to figure out what to do with the records. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Before we go, one bit of speed element. I know you lost your partner, Fats. Like, yeah. how you doing with that situation? I, I, man, I, you know, that, that caught me off guard completely. I didn't expect that at all. And the timing was crazy. You know what I'm saying? We've been sitting on everything. We've been just holding our, our punches just to do it all at once. And you know what I'm saying? We've been all anticipating the moment that we get to enjoy. And it's it's a little fucked up. It's, a, it's, it's really fucked up that my partner my homeboy, you know what I'm saying, ain't on this side of, of, the, of the dimension to experience it with us and, and, you know, benefit from it and, you know, from like, <clears throat> I don't want to go too deep into it, you know what I'm saying, that's not much. No, I feel you, it's back, it's back, yeah. You know what I'm saying, but like as kids, like as kids, we proud of them. You know yeah, real shit.
Well, it's been a long journey, long history, but this is exactly what we want to be able to do. Yes, our people from our neighborhood owning the dirt, owning the buildings, and building the kind of businesses that our community deserves. 100%. Thank you for that, bro. Absolutely, man. This this, this is a just full circle for me. Just decades, you know, being being in this area, in this parking lot, and yep. then just everything going on outside of this. I think it's perfect time, and it's it's a perfect intersection for what we're doing with the music, trying to bring tourism to the area, just yep. trying to improve, you know, the community. And I'm excited, you know, Dave. Thank you for partnering, making mm -hmm. it possible. Mm -hmm. um, the sky's the limit for real. That's right. Uh, That's yeah. right. That it's it's exciting what we plan to do, and I feel bad because they spent so much time and put so much energy into making the fish shack, and Steve's barbershop, but our plans for the future are to redevelop this into yeah. a, a a mixed development retail and um, multifamily complex. Mm -hmm. So the marathon will obviously always be there. We we'll have the barbershop, the fish shack, and some other high quality retail, and then we're gonna build um, quality affordable housing on top. Right. Hopefully right. 100, right. 100 plus that's units. Need. That's what we need right here by the train. Yeah. Right. We're gonna have Destination Crenshaw popping off on Crenshaw on the boulevard. Yeah. Uh, millions of people literally will come from LAX. Yeah. That'll be their first stop in the city of LA. They'll be able to jump off, come to the Marathon yeah. store uh, and get high quality retail in our community. So it's a big deal for us. 100%. Right. Yeah. Why is it so important, man, for you to be an entrepreneur and 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 buy properties? And you know what I'm saying, like right. like own the block that you kind of stood in front of. Well, that one property you're talking about, um, 3420 West Lawson, that's mm -hmm. the building that the marathon um, clothing was in from day one, even before it was a marathon. When it was just Lawson Tees, we was just renting a space and you know selling little odd items, T-shirts and stuff. It was in that shopping plaza, uh, plaza. Mm -hmm. and even before we had the space rented. That was our corner we used to grind off of. Mm -hmm. So that building meant a lot to us um, for sentimental reasons and just for the strategic location and what's going on right around it in mm -hmm. L.A. and on Crenshaw with the train yes, and everything. Sir. So um, from a real estate standpoint, it was a great um, opportunity. But then just from a sentimental level also, we connected to that to that corner, to that so building. So is that corner yours? Yeah, that whole, that whole strip mall. The yeah. whole plaza? The whole plaza, yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. That's I mean, amazing. Myself, my brother, Dave Gross, we partners on it. Mm -hmm. So we all went in and, and purchased the whole lot together. Yeah. Man, what does that feel like to, to stand there many times to drive by, ride a bike pass, or whatever it may be, to now all of them things owning it, man, it ain't really sunk in for real. You know what I mean? I don't think it really, really sunk in. And we got other real estate, yeah. you know, but Hell that yeah. one just pulling in that parking lot and being like, you know, this is our land. It's so that's so inspiring because there must be so many people from that neighborhood as well that see you doing that, knowing your story, and thinking about what their journey is going to be like yeah. next. Mm -hmm. right. You know, being inspired by you. That's really cool. Even mm -hmm. more so that you're continuing to invest into that same neighborhood mm -hmm. because I feel like you had the opportunity. You could have gone elsewhere. Anywhere. But you chose, because of the <laughs> sentimental value and what that neighborhood means to you, to give back and grow from there. So that's amazing. Yeah. Through all your hard work. And you work, really be there too, though. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You know yeah. some people are like, yeah, he owned that. And yeah. like, we never right. see yeah. him. Right, right, right. They're like, no, check that's, out. That's a family business. So my family there. You know, so I, I check in with my, yeah. my family. Well, my, and I think that just people that know you and know why you came, not came back, but why you stay there. Mm -hmm. I think that there is such a shield of protection mm. that will be around any venture that you do, man. And what's crazy big, if I tell you the story off air, how we ended up even being able to make an offer on the building. That's crazy. We've been trying to buy the building for years. Wow. Damn. And it's a big train coming. I know. Mm -hmm. And that's going to make the value of all the yeah. property go up. Yeah. So we've been trying to buy that building for years from, you know, the owners and they like, we're not budging. Mm. Some things happened and it worked in our favor. And we ended up being able to make an offer on the on the on the building and closed on it 
you know, not too long ago. Congratulations. But I'll tell you that story off Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Easy call. I always thought of hip hop as a as a foot in the door to, to business on your own terms. So the goal was always to create, you know, an ecosystem around the music. So, you know, we got the Marathon clothing, we got the Marathon retail space, which is called the Marathon Store, the Marathon OG, which is a grow house and a, um, uh, you know, medical marijuana brand. Got a restaurant partnership with Fat Burger. We got our own restaurant called Baba Leo's. We, we in the process of um, opening. You know, we got a, um, a co-work, inner city co-work entrepreneurial incubator called Vector 90. You know, we got a um, SC Ventures, which is a real estate development partnership between All Money In and Dave Gross. And we invested in a, a skating ring. That was our first um, project was, you know, being involved in the renovation and grand opening, re-grand opening the World on Wheels skating ring in L.A. Yeah, what else, man? Am I, am I leaving anything? I, oh, the Marathon Agency. It's a creative marketing and branding agency with uh, Karen Civil, Stephen Carless, George Paniche, and myself. When I say myself, I mean all money in team. So yeah, the goal is just to be able to create enterprise around the music and um, utilize the platforms and the attention that being in a position as an artist that people are interested in puts you in to brand other businesses and create value around other things. So we done pretty well. The real estate thing, like, I didn't really know that about you. When did you start doing that, actually? Uh, I mean, we've been, we've been trying to expand the real estate thing. We, we own real estate for a while, but we've been trying to expand on it and really make it into something that bring in some decent, you know, consistently or just on a, on a monthly basis as landlords. So, um, you know, we, we got the, the shopping center that the Marathon store is in recently. Yep. And so I think, you know, they wrote an article about that and just talked about You guys about, expanded it and reopened it, correct? Yeah, so it's two different things. We renovated the space and, and created the Marathon store but then we just bought the building recently. So mm, you bought the building. Yeah, we bought the hey. whole building. Yeah. So um the vision with that, we're gonna end up rebuilding that and just renovating that whole building and building residential on top. But um for now, you know, we just we opened up a barbershop there, a new barbershop, a new restaurant. We got the marathon store, we got a Oof. cell phone shop, and then we uh got like three other tenants that, you know, um been there for years. Lipsy, who do you have with you? This is my daughter, Imani Dior. Is this your first Grammys? Yes. How are you feeling? Good. Dad, how are you feeling? I feel great. Incredible. Are you a, are you a cool dad with the, the Grammy nomination? Is he a cool dad? Yes. You gotta ask her that. I don't know. <laughs> yes, or you're like, Dad, is. put your stop talking about your Grammy nom. <laughs> cool dad points. How do you feel? Are you nervous, excited? Nah, you know, I'm just um I, I am excited, you know. I'm uh humble, inspired, a lot of things, you know. Yeah. How did you feel when you got the call that this body of work, because you put a lot into it, it received a lot of great buzz, a lot of great feedback, but it was also being recognized by the Academy. Right. Um, it's my debut album, you know, so for my first one out the gate, it's like, you know, it was overwhelming a little bit. You know, it was, um, like I said, inspiring, you know, humbling, you know, a um, combination of feelings. Do you yeah. feel any of that sophomore album pressure now? You know what? I don't. I feel like, you know, you get one chance to make a first impression. You know what I mean? And from there, it's about consistency. So I feel like we did it. We put a, a great foot forward on the first one. We're going to go back in strong. I love that. Yeah. How are you going to celebrate tonight? Man, I got a music video to shoot in the morning. So Work we, never might, we might take a shot and we got to get back at it tomorrow. Yeah. Who are you looking forward to seeing perform tonight? Beyonce and Cardi B. Ooh. Beyonce and Cardi B. Dad's like, I knew that, I knew that was going to be yeah. the answer. <laughs> and what about you? Um, Young Thug opening it up. You know, that's my guy. Beyonce, obviously, she she one of the greatest performers ever. Um, Cardi, you know what I mean? I think Cardi gonna kill it. Everybody though, you know? Yeah. Are you gonna stop and talk to anyone during commercial break about a collab? Are you gonna use this opportunity to? Man, you know what? I gotta let them things happen organic. I'm gonna just cheer for my friends. A lot of my friends nominated, and uh, you know, kick with my fam and just take to take the. Send this for me. I have a dream. For our people to step into their greatness collectively, you know.
any tours coming up? Any concerts? We haven't had a good Nipsey tour, I feel like, in a minute. Yeah, nah. What's <clears> up? <throat> we we tour we, <clears throat> we did a tour <clears throat> um for the for the Victory Lab album. Um <clears throat> That was like a su- last summer, right? Yeah, that was 2018. Mm-hmm. You know, so we gonna we're gonna definitely go back out this year. I'm gonna put out some new music before we announce the tour, but we're gonna be out before the end of 2019, for sure. Are you just going to be dropping singles on us, or is there a project coming? Uh, I'm working. I'm going back in the studio now. So, you know, I got I got racks in the middle that we working right now. It's and, a um, banger, man. Yeah, thank you. And, um, you know, we're going to have an update soon, but we back in the lab cooking. Yeah, definitely. But I feel like this one right here is going to set the tone for spring and summertime. Right, right. There's no rush. Right. No, you know, I feel like a lot of time artists, you guys feel rushed right. to put so much music out. I mean, I just want to work for real. You know, when we drop it and when we put it out, you know, we're going we gonna to go off. We're going to read the defense as we go. Hey. But it's like, I just want to be creative. You know what I mean? We, a lot just happened. It's a lot I want to say. Hey, it's a lot that happened, yeah. man. Like a Grammy nomination. Yeah, definitely. Congratulations. I haven't seen you. So thank congratulations, you. Thank man. You, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm yeah. so proud of you, man. Appreciate you. Well, thank you for coming through. <laughs> I know I know you got a lot to do, so thank you for coming through and hanging out with us. Of course. Always. Hey, be sure, like I said, this is the single right now. The video's out. As soon as this interview's over, head over and watch the video. Yeah. Racks in the Middle featuring yeah. Roddy Rich. Hit your radio stations. Request it. Support it. Yeah. Under no condition, would you ever catch me slipping? Motorcade shooters, plus the main back show for German. They catch me waiting, or send me off to prison. Judge ain't sympathizing, court don't show forgiveness. Isn't in the Lambo, drowning out the music. Send me on with the flowers, five gold cubits. Champagne while I shop, hope I splurge foolish. Closing that bro twice this month, both commercial units. Damn, I wish my nigga fast was here. How you die at 30, sucked it after banging all them years. Grammy nominated, in the sign of shedding tears. All this money, power, fame, and I can't make you reappear. But I don't wipe them, no. We just embrace the only life we know. If it was me, I'd tell you, nigga, lay your life and grow. i tell you, finish what we started, reach the heights, you know. The gas to V12 to the pipe and smoke. I was riding around in the V12 with the racks in the middle. Had a prayer to Almighty God and let my dog out and kill him. When you get it straight up by the mud, you can't imagine this shit. I've been pulling up in the drop tops with the baddest bitches. If they catch me with it, they gonna send me off to prison. Judge ain't sympathizing. Court don't show forgiveness. You see what they doing to rappers? You see how they targeting rappers? I ain't gonna make it easy. You know, we gonna play by the rules. You know. I'm a radical, man. I ain't a politician. I'm with the people. I ain't with the, like... Uh, status quo in the institutions. I ain't even built like that. I'm mm-hmm. with the people, you know what I'm saying? When it's time to set it off and we get in, and it's time to turn up, I'm with that movement. Not literally set it off, but like I'm with the we gonna be honest and raw. Yeah. You know what I mean? I ain't gonna be You don't politi- wanna play the games. I ain't gonna be political. You know, I ain't I ain't got them bones in my body. I'ma speak truth to power. I was riding around in the V12 with the racks in the middle. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, we announcing our partnership with Puma. You know, we got a big Woo, deal. Are oh, we doing that right now? Oh, wow. Wow. Let's go, let's go. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Engine in the Lambo drowning out the music. Sip Dior with the flowers, five gold Cubans. Champagne while I shop, hope I splurge foolish. Closing escrow twice this month, both commercial units. Damn, I wish my nigga. Always had the passion, nigga. This a classic. How we came from nothing. When it got established, living like a savage, trying to make some magic. Everybody starving, it's trying to take a sandwich. I know it's elaborate, and nigga just imagine. Fell throughout the acid, we can make it happen. Weaving through the traffic, I can take you back then. 
Everything I said I meant I was never capping I was never scared to stand Front line with MAC tents Razor shoot at black men Never felt the satisfaction When I seen the game collapsing They took the rules and whacked me Started moving at a different frequency And it got me living lavish On my partner steady passing Trying to wiggle through this madness Trying to fight this gravity at time I swear I can feel it pull me backwards Putting thousands on their caskets Trying to pick the right reactions I appreciate the progress But I'm so conflicted by the status nah. Almost forgot what I was doing Shit Almost forgot where I was going I've been wrong. driving, I've been smoking to these Almost forgot what I was doing Almost forgot what I was drinking What the hell have I been thinking Don't let the money make you dizzy, Now I'm nigga. just riding through the city Now I'm just riding through the city Stay And ain't nobody rolling with me And ain't nobody rolling with me It ain't no problem, I'm gon' get it It ain't no problem, Let's I'm gon' get, get it This is trip, 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 trip Riding around, smoking by myself don't you know I do it so well? All Dollar signs all on my heels. Rolling solo, dolo. This is trip, 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 I trip. I trip sometimes. Hey, almost forgot what I was doing. That's what I call a full three Almost three forgot six. where I was going. I've been driving, I've been smoking. Almost forgot what Fuck I was gas, doing. Almost forgot what I was drinking. What the hell have I been thinking? Just watch. Just watch. Just watch. Just watch. Man, what do you think about the gentrification that's going on out here in L.A., man? I mean, it's a lot. I think about it, for real. Yeah. Um, Where the hell are black people in L.A. now? Lancaster. Yeah, Lancaster. Palmdale. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You get a house for a couple hundred thousand, a four-bedroom, five-bedroom out there, mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. see the crime going up. You see yeah. they, they moving. You know, it was like, I take it, I wasn't around for the last migration, but mm -hmm. I heard it from my granny stories. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And... I think that's what's going on right now. They're mm. relocating our people. Yeah, absolutely. From, from policy. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And they're building a train down Crenshaw. They're spending $3 billion on that development. Yeah. Mm. You know, mm. and that's having an effect on the price of real estate. Yes, it is. And they uh, they always, when, when they want to move people around, they start building freeways and train stations. Mm. This is the Harbor Freeway. That's what... To, Fucked up South Central LA. That right. that turned it into the hood right. when they built the Harbor Freeway. Right. Central Avenue used to be the shit. Jazz and gonna, everything, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was the 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 business district. Right. Yeah, the black business district. So right. yeah, it's heavy. Yeah, it's it's heavy. But you know, not to cut you short. No, go ahead, brother. I think that um, it's always a silver lining and everything. Mm. And so I think that to benefit off of it, we got to be entrepreneurial. Yes, we do. I mean, in an entrepreneurial mindset. Yeah, and, and we know that. To impact these developments like Inglewood. I got a homeboy that he owned a house in the Carlton Square. Mm. You know, and he ain't sell it. He, That's he's good. He's Airbnb in it out. Yeah. And he like, Nip, I made 300000 just off the stadium being built. Absolutely. Because I held my property and now I'm Airbnb in it and I'm charging ten k a month for, mm. for when, when these, you know, NFL players come play these games. Yeah. This, my, my location, he like, I plushed it out. You know what I mean? And so it's 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 ways and you got you to gotta have your hands on some capital. Absolutely, mm -hmm. but you know you can team up, and if you're aware of the, of the opportunity, you can you can team up with people that do got capital and be involved in it. Yeah, know? and for those who don't know, out here in LA, they're building a football stadium out here in Inglewood, and they're trying to price a lot of the black businesses out, so they need to start linking up, yep. so they can control the politics yep. out here. Power 106, uh -huh. lift off show every single night. Yes, yeah. sir. Just yeah. incredible. Sour milk. And like yeah. Milk said, LA royalty is here, man. Nipsey oh, Hussle. My brothers. Thank y'all, man. Thank y'all. LA Leakers, man. Classic staples. <laughs> I love Appreciate it, man. That. Yeah. Appreciate that. Great to have you on the show, man. Of course. New song, Racks in the Middle. Mm -hmm. uh, just an amazing you know, piece of work. Thank you. With you, Roddy Rich, produced by Hit Boy. Yep. Uh, how does this song come about with y'all? Man, I just I walked in the studio with Hit. I had been out of town just like running around. We had been working the album the whole year. And I just walked in the studio. But matter of fact, I hit Hit Boy like, man, what you doing? You got some music. He's like, man, pull up. I walked in. That's the first record he played. Wow. And uh, I just started working on the, the verses immediately as soon as I heard it. And we sat in there. I sat down, started working. Probably sat in there for like three, four hours. And then finished the record. And then uh, mixed it the next day. And then had a meeting with the label and started pressing play on it. <laughs> Yeah. Here we are. Just went an hour on yeah, the radio like back that. to back with it. Like that. Yeah. 
And this is a uh, beginning stages of like a new project or just just a, just a new wave of music. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm about to go in and really lock down and start recording my next project. But um, you know, as I'm working, I got records. I'm a, you know what I mean? Start working also so yeah. that by the time the album is done, we got records that everybody familiar with. Okay. As opposed to starting from scratch, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. You, you've turned into to quite the entrepreneur, man, since, yeah. since we first met. Um, Thank you, bro. Congratulations on all the property you, you've recently bought. What does that mean to you, man, to, to own that that lot, you know what I'm saying, where where you basically grew up and, and you know, hustled out of and right. did everything? Right. Man, it's, it's on one level, it's sentimental because we grew up right there, and that's the corner that I'm connected to. And then on another level, it's just a great business move and a, a, a great piece of real estate to own, especially yeah. right now, what's going on with that train, that development on Crenshaw, just the whole area. Uh, it's a great piece of land to own. But then also, like y'all said, it's connected to us in a much deeper way. Mm -hmm. Used to, you know, my first Nipsey Hustle music was tested in that parking lot, you know what I mean? On, on just people yeah. and just everything else took place in that parking lot. So. Full circle moment for sure. Yeah. Man, that's crazy, yeah. bro. Nip, you've really built this from the ground up. Yeah. It didn't happen overnight. Not at all. I could see as the songs continue to come out, the growth in the music. Yeah, yeah. You could feel the honesty yeah. in the songs. Yeah. Uh, you've had such an interesting story, and I know we're only like halfway through, if that. Like right, I, I right. really could tell you're just getting started. Yeah. And people are looking at you as they should be, as the blueprint to how to, you know what I'm saying, really come up you know right. what i mean because of the the groundwork that you put in 10 toes down that part what what is your advice because we talk to so many young artists and i see a lot of stuff on the internet what's kind of your advice to younger artists when they're setting up their deals or not signing right away uh knowing their self-worth i just always love hearing you speak about that type of stuff because i think it's so important to the new generation right um <clears throat> man that's a tough question for real so much things that you got to be become experts at or or just aware and knowledgeable about but i feel like it's you know don't be in no rush to um take no money that, mm. that that's my main yeah like don't be in no rush to take no check build it you know what i mean go slow and build it because mm -hmm. as you learn you'll start to really see your best route as opposed to you know learning after you didn't already put your name on something and then having all these regrets and you know what i mean like looking like a complainer or somebody that going back on their word when you try to wiggle out that, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, no, nah, I would just say just don't be in no rush to, to, to take no ba no bag. Like, go slow with it and, and build it, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Well, when, when you uh, got out of your first deal, I believe it was with Epic. Uh, I don't know. Was yeah, it Epic, Epic yeah. Records, yeah. Um, what was the market like for, for Nipsey Hussle? Were, were labels like, uh, just stay away from him, or, or was there people trying to sign you immediately back then? Man, it was, you know, it was crazy, man. Khaled was trying to do a deal. Oh, way okay. back, way back, you know, back then in the wow. Epic days, yeah, I, I had flew out to Miami and we tried to get a deal signed to where I could get off Epic and, and actually do a deal with Kelly. But um, you know, when I got off, we had what they—it's like an override. So mm -hmm. anywhere you sign, you know, Epic stays involved if you sign within the next, I think, three or two years. Okay. So one thing I wanted to do was let that cooling off period go by and just build indie, and mm -hmm. then if I did entertain some again, it'll be after that little window. What was there? Was there a part of you though that was like? Damn, like, can I afford to 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 be indie for two years and and? Yeah, I was. I mean, I thought about how I can make sure that, you know, we still make progress of and course. we still, um, grew during yeah. that 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 period, because it was it was always opportunities to sign. Yeah, but it was just like you know, I could, it's things I could do myself to and get bigger, mm -hmm. and you know, just make the deal and just the relationship more valuable by proving myself a little bit more. Yeah. And just showing that, you know, as an independent, I can make decisions that impact. Okay. Because that, that mean everything going back into a building because right. I, I got some history where I could be like, them decisions was us. We did the uh, Proud to Pay $100 yes. mixtape and uh, Mailbox Money or whatever, the Indie Moves Marathon, the tours, whatever that we done. You know, them was us. So we got to take credit for the success of it. Circling back to, you know, how you, you brought up Khaled. I didn't know he was so involved early on. Yeah, yeah, I had that relationship. That but seeing the pictures go up on Instagram that y'all are, you know, in the studio. Uh, what, what, what's the chemistry? What's the magic going on in there? Man, I um I went to Miami and did a record for the Father of Assad album. Mm. And, uh, you know, what I mean, Khaled, you know, we sat and ate food with his family first, talked for like two, three hours. 
Then he played me the album. His album played me like seven videos. Wow. So you know, he just got a he got a, a monster project about to come out, and um, uh, then he played the record for me. Mm. So you know, it was that order of doing it. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's probably the new order for me when I do a collab with somebody. Let's eat, let's chop it, let's have a combo, right. let's vibe for a minute, then let's do the music. Build with right. them as people. You know what I mean? Yeah, because yeah. the record came out real personal and real uh, close to me. I think it was just because of how we set up the right. the session. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That's dope, man. Sick, man. That's yeah. super dope. Now, now you, you obviously... Uh, Got a, a collaboration deal going on with Puma. Exactly, you know, what does that entail exactly? So it's it's two sides to it. On one side, I'm I'm a brand ambassador for Puma, so basically I'm it's an endorsement deal. Uh huh. The other side of it is a collaborative project with okay. the Marathon and Puma. Okay. So we're gonna do um a collection, multiple collections, but the first one drop uh fall 2019, like around September. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be shoes, um, uh, apparel, uh, a few accessories. You know. So basically, a, a, a nip sneaker. Yeah, for sure, a sneaker. Okay. But then it, it's gonna be a marathon, not nip. It's yeah, gonna yeah. be a marathon okay. Puma. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a also just you know uh, endorse the Puma products. So I'm gonna be in ads wearing the stuff. But uh -huh. then the other part of it is a collab between marathon and Puma. Okay. So it won't be no Nipsey Hustle Puma shoe. It'll be a marathon, marathon nips. Right. I mean marathon Puma shoe. Yeah. yeah. We, we were speaking earlier. Uh, you know, obviously when you got your first start, your first deal with Epic. Fast forward 10 years, you drop your debut album and it's nominated for a Grammy. Mm -hmm. what, what's, what's that mean to Nipsey Hussle, man? That's crazy, you know? Just like um, your first rap album nominated for best rap album after mm -hmm. a mixtape career, Yeah, you know what I mean? And just an unorthodox path that we took to putting out an album, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, you know, felt the gang of ways about it, but just happy, inspired. You know, um, I ain't gonna say like you're not gonna be validated by an opinion no, or by, of course. Uh, but you know, as just being an artist, that the acknowledgement type, is yeah, is, that means something. You know what yeah. I mean? So I felt just like man, that's crazy. You know, I felt motivated to do some more music for yeah. real, get some more music out. And, and how do you first get that news? Like, who who tells you about it? I or? was I was with my engineer, and we knew the news was getting announced that morning, so uh. he was watching Twitter. And he seen it, we was working out, he just jumped up and started like doing his little <laughs> celebration. So I'm like, oh, we must have got nominated. <laughs> that's so hard. Yeah, and I oh, checked my shit like, all right, boom. <laughs> that's hard. Man, yeah. congrats on that, man. Thank you. We, we
I'm, I'm gonna have regrets if certain things don't happen. If I don't be who I felt I could have been, <coughs> I'm gonna have regrets, cuz. Mm. You feel me? On, uh, so that's why I be like, regardless of what. I don't wanna be one of them old people that's miserable and hate what they did with their life. And like, you know what I'm saying? Like, mad at the world. Jealous of young niggas and shit. It's a lot of old niggas mad at niggas because they fucked their shit off, cuz. People grew up around these niggas wondering why they were so spiteful towards young niggas. Like, damn, girl, why you, you ain't my age. But niggas be threatened by a nigga potential, nigga opportunity. I'll be so scared for these niggas trick to work on me. When they just on six, so that'd be my main motivation. I only want y'all trick to work on me. You know, I want you to, you know, imagine that, you know, we are sitting here, you know, 10 years from now. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you want to be your greatest accomplishments? Uh, 10 years from now, I would just like to have you know, lay the, lay the blueprint down that other people could follow that come from similar situation. You know what I mean? Um, elevated my team, my family, you know, myself, and inspired, mm -hmm. I would say, would be the most important things. Um, looking back 10 years from now that I would like to see done.
Yeah, motherfucker! Yeah! You gotta come to the left room, 